Welcome everyone to another Empyrean Workshop Showcase. Join me today as we take a look at the massive Gobbler Warbird. Today's design is a follow-up to the original Asteroid Gobbler design. This is the Gobbler Warbird by creator Layla Nee. This is an unlock level 25 and size class 20 capital vessel. As you can see, this is an extremely tall capital vessel and can stand taller than some of the mountain ranges in the game. So starting from the top of this massive ship, we have a single hatch bay. We can come in here and we see we have the letter A for this being the first level of the ship. We have some sentry guns here protecting our way in, just making sure nobody naughty gets inside. And here we come into the next extension of the ship. Passing on through, you come to another elevator. And on this side, you see we have some oxygen tanks. Then going into the next step of the elevator, we come to these exit doors. These are small vessel landing points. For any small vessels you might have that have a door opening to the back of where their docking pads are. There is a total of five of these. So that means you can dock. 10 total smaller vessels on the side of the ship using these bays. In level C, we find our oxygen tank area. As you can see, it is fully stocked with tons of O2 tanks all over the place. So here we are on level D, and as you can see, we actually have a sign telling us what each level of the ship is for, this one being for residential. Coming to the side over here, we enter into our main medical bay facility where you can see we have multiple scanners, a variety of things, but no medic station. Passing on through, we come into the repair bay area where we have an oxygen station on one side, a repair station on the other, of course our repair bay module, and a big opening leading down to a cargo bay. Going through the green door, we come into our main kitchen area where we have three food processors, as well as a total of eight fridges in here and some counters as well as some more decorative storage. Back by the elevator, we turn and going through this door, we come into the actual living quarters of the ship. The first doors on the left and right are the main barracks where you'll find a large room filled with bunk beds and some closets. And the doors at the end of the hallway are the rooms for, I guess, the pilot and co-pilot where you'll find nicer beds, TVs, couches, and just all of the nice amenities. Level E is the bridge and cargo hold area. And starting right here, we are in the cargo hold. Going to this side, we come to the blue section where you'll find a large number of blue cargo boxes lining the walls. These all have LCD screens that are ready to be customized. And on the other side, we have the red cargo hold. However, the cargo boxes are still blue which to me is something I think could be updated really quickly just to make the match so this is all red. Going to either side of the elevator will take you to matching sides of this area. In here, you'll find a large empty room that gives you plenty of space to fill in whatever you need, customize it however you want. Over here behind this shutter door on each side, you will find your gravity generators. And behind this shutter door, you have access into your food farming areas. Each of these areas has a total of 99 growing plots, giving you a total of 198 growing plots across the entire ship. Each of these areas will have two food processors, two fridges, and two cargo boxes. Coming this way to this shutter door, we come into another hallway. And right here, we have a door that leads outside, but not only outside, but to two landing gear as well as a ramp that if you use the specialized landing station for this, you will have a spot to step out of the ship there. Continuing down the hallway, we see this little opening that leads to another side of the hallway. And as you can see, this is filled with your fuel tanks. Continuing into here, we come into the fabrication area where you will find some advanced constructors, some more cargo boxes, as well as a guide leading you back this way. Here you'll find some more fuel tanks as well as your generators tucked away in the glass to keep you protected. 
We also have a viewing area of the cargo bay access door for going up into the repair bay area. And through here, we are back into the original section over here by the elevator. Back here, if we follow this trail and come up the walkway here, you'll see the other side, which is blue and identical, except for being a mirror image of the red side. Over here, we have access to our core, which is nicely protected in the middle area of the ship. And in here, we come into the main command and control bridge area. Here you'll find switches throughout the area with LCD screens telling you what they do and whether they are on or off. Going this way, you will find your main bridge area where you have your two trusty co-pilots and yes, I do believe they are twins. Here is of course your nice pilot seat surrounded by two layers of glass. But just in case you're worried about being protected only by glass while you're in battle, you do have access to a battle bridge. Coming up here, you will find this little blank area, and what this actually is, is access to one of these stationary weapons, like a rocket launcher or pulse laser, making it easy to repair them from inside the ship without having to worry about flying around outside. On the other side, we come into the battle bridge, where you see we have numerous passenger seats, as well as another pilot seat, and a very well-protected area. Moving on down, we come to the F level, this is the SV flight deck for your larger SVs that you cannot dock easily outside the ship. Tucked away behind shutter doors on each side, there are some RCS. You also have behind this shutter door, a large number of ammo boxes, giving you plenty of space for storing ammo for the many weapons on the ship. But this is also a larger level than some of the others because we do have stairs leading up into other sections. Going up the stairs, you'll find more oxygen tanks. You also find a large open area that is again a space you can customize to fit your needs. Going across the two walkways, we also have access to the other side where we have more open areas free for you to customize as you see fit. It's also important to note that the elevator on this side of the ship also gives you back access to several of the stationary weapons on the outside of the ship. Coming down to the G level, this is a completely unused open level for you to decide and do with what you wish. The H level is for your harvest cargo boxes. Makes sense, right? The eye level is for your indigo colored cargo boxes. The J level is for your smaller infirmary medic station area where we actually do have a clone chamber and medic station available, as well as some more of the scanners. And of course the K level is for our engineering and warp core area where you see we have another gravity generator, an offline protection and our illustrious warp core tucked away well protected behind a lot of armor. And our last level L is the HV hangar bay area where we have a repair station, our O2 station, another medic station, another clone chamber, and plenty of armor lockers along the sides as well as easy access down and parking for three hover vessels. There are also four cargo boxes embedded in the wall so you do have some storage here. Once again, the Gobbler Warbird is an unlock level 25 size class 20 capital vessel. With 108 fuel tanks, it can hold a total of 429,300 fuel. And as you can see, with it sitting stationary and docked with thrusters turned off, I have 160 hours of use. Coming with 103 oxygen tanks, it can hold 206,000O2 and requires 19,400 to fill it up which will be handled by the 21 ventilators spread throughout. It also comes equipped with two oxygen stations, two medic stations, and two clone chambers, as you saw. Of course, calling the ship a warbird would not be complete without a full load of attack and defense capabilities. The warbird comes with six flat turrets, six minigun turrets, two artillery turrets, 
six pulse laser turrets, 14 sentry guns, four plasma turrets, five pulse lasers, four rocket launchers, five cannon turrets, four rocket turrets, and two drill turrets. In total, it carries 93 cargo boxes, 16 ammo boxes, as well as the 12 fridges, 7 food processors, and 6 advanced constructors. Of course, with a ship this size, you can expect the cost to be pretty high. If you wish to build the ship, you will need over 130,000 Sathium, over 80,000 Iron, and over 15,000 Restrum and Zascosium. You will also need 14,000 Neodymium and a little over 10,000 Cobalt and Silicon. Compared to those, the 5,707 copper, as well as the other parts, seem pretty small in comparison. With this being a size class 20 ship, you will have a hard time finding a server that you can use this on as most of them will lock you out from using a ship this size. This is definitely more built for a single player use because of the size, however with the cost it's definitely a very late game ship and probably the last one you will ever need to build. If you're interested in checking out the Warbird, I will of course have a link in the description below and be sure if you check it out and like it to leave a thumbs up and a nice comment on the workshop page for Layla Neat. If you have any creative suggestions or comments for the design, be sure to also post them there on the workshop page. Well that is it for today's video, if you enjoyed the video be sure to leave me a like, leave me a comment, and hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. As always, I am your host Mr. Spicy. Thanks so much for watching everyone, be sure to keep it spicy this week, and I will see you in the next video.